services. Hello and welcome to the Bipartisan Policy Center. I'm Leslie Jen Tarasimi, the Managing Director of our energy program and lead for the BPC Farm and Forest Carbon Solutions Initiative. And I'm joined here today by former Senator Saxby Chambliss to moderate today's conversation with Chairwoman Stabenow. Uh, so Senator Chambliss served in Congress for two decades, first as the representative for Georgia's 8th Congressional District and then as United States Senator from Georgia for two terms. Senator Chambliss served as chair of the Senate Agriculture Committee from 2005 to 2007 and helped spearhead the effort behind the 2008 Farm Bill. And then in 2021, BBC created our Farm and Forest Carbon Solutions Task Force, and we were so grateful that Senator Chambliss uh, served as co-chair of that task force alongside former Senator Heidi Heitkamp, who couldn't be here today. Um, and we are thrilled to welcome Senator Debbie Stabenow, who has served in Congress for 26 years, four of which as the Congresswoman for Michigan's 8th District and the rest in the U.S. Senate. Senator Stabenow is the chair of the Senate Agriculture Committee and has served as the top Democrat on that committee since 2015. She played a leading role in the 2014, 18, and now 2023 farm bills. Senator Stabenow announced <laughs> she will be leaving Congress at the end of her term in January 2025, marking the end of a 50-year career in public service defined by scores of bipartisan accomplishments. And we are so thankful for her service and so excited to hear from you today. And so I will turn it over to you, Senator Chambliss, for the first question. Well, thank you, Leslie. And uh, I'm really pleased to be here this morning. Debbie and I go back, uh, and I, I, it's hard oh, right. for me to say, no, no, Chairwoman. No, no. We'll, we'll, we'll just Debbie. say, Debbie, <laughs> <Sassy>. okay. <laughs> we, uh, we are, um, uh, both veterans of four farm bills, three of which we worked on together. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited for her to be here, and um, we're going to have an interesting discussion about what's going to happen between the next two weeks and then uh, <laughs> the thereafter. Um, I want to also say that uh, I've been privileged to serve along with our mutual friend uh, Heidi Heitkamp as the co-chair of the Farm and Forest Solutions Task Force um, that we worked on for um, the last two years. And we knew after the 2020 election that the issue of climate change would be very much uh, forefront in the center with this administration, and of course it has been. Uh, agriculture is a natural partner with the issue of carbon sequestration. So what we as a task force did was to, we got together another 18 members, a very diverse, very bipartisan group, and we brought in lots of experts to talk about the issue of, of agriculture's participation in climate change. And at the end of the day, we, um, we had 25 recommendations that were very, very much consensus and um, very common sense recommendations that were in line with <coughs> our initial um, uh, guardrails, which was we do not want to harm any existing farm bro programs, um, any Carbon uh, participation in carbon markets had to be voluntary on the part of our farmers and ranchers and forest landowners. Um, that whatever programs that needed that that were provided to farmers, ranchers, and landowners would be incentive-based because if you're going to get a buy-in from farmers, you better show an income income stream to help them. Um, and um, the, um, uh, the last point was it had to be uh, added value to programs. So we are very pleased to uh, the consensus with the uh, recommendations. We had uh, long discussions with uh, the chairwoman as well as, as ranking yeah. member yeah. Bozeman and to your uh, house colleagues also, and we looked will continue to be a resource for you. So, Debbie, this, um, you know, farm bills, as we know, uh, are always difficult. Um, there are, um, it is a major, major economic influence. Right. And the, um, uh, the budget 
is always a major issue. It's always the number one issue as you approach it. And I know uh, you've been very instrumental in trying to figure out ways to find money uh, to add to the baseline because it's going to be critical this time around. I see some differences here go, as you go into the Farm Bill this year from what I experienced and what uh, you and I jointly experienced in that um, the, um, the nutrition um, title is always the biggest part of the Farm Bill. I think it's about 80% still. Mm -hmm. And the cost of, of um, food products at the grocery store, since the last time bill, the farm bill was, was written, have skyrocketed. So that's going to be a major issue, obviously. <clears throat> uh, secondly, on the commodity, when you think about the commodity title, the input costs on the side of farmers, ranchers, and forest landowners also have skyrocketed over the last five years. Um, I know you have the silver bullets that's going to figure <laughs> out how we're going to get the right kind of baseline in this farm, uh, farm bill. And um, as you think about that, are you comfortable at this point with, with the issue of knowing that you have the right kind of baseline to come up with a meaningful farm bill this time around. Well, Sassy, first let me say it's so great to see you and uh, say hi to my dear friend Heidi Heidkamp for me and uh, um, look forward to, to working with both of you on all these issues. I'm going to answer that, but let me first say your task force has been um, absolutely instrumental in helping us and we are taking uh, the majority of the recommendations. I mean, your approach is what we're is what I'm supporting and we're putting in the Farm Bill. So you, you have made a major impact, everybody here who has been working on this, and I want to thank you for all of your efforts. Um, we have such a complicated set of issues to deal with right now. Um, <clears throat> we have, uh, do we have all the baseline to deal with all the needs? No. We'll just start there. And I'm looking under every rock and every, I mean, I literally, every possible thing you can think of, I've been working to how do we, how do we um, expand that. And uh, in that effort, um, so please, Senator Bozeman and I have asked, for instance, trade promotion is critical for all of our commodities, we'll get markets, be able to, and every single one of our uh, farm groups have said, Crop insurance, trade promotion, top two priorities for them. And so we've asked uh, Secretary Vilsack to address that with dollars that uh, are remaining in the Commodity Credit Corporation this month. Uh, that, uh, and we're hopeful we're going to get a response that's going to allow us for robust trade market assistance, which is what we need. We have money in the baseline. I got it in back in 2018. So we have money, but it hasn't been increased in a long time. And so uh, groups have asked us to double that funding. I, I think we're going to be able to create something that will, that will pretty much do that for the next five years. And so we can do that without taking away from the baseline. So I'm looking for everything we can do uh, on that point. Good news is, on the areas that you're all working on, we have robust new funding on conservation. Popular, voluntary conservation programs. You are so right about agriculture leading the way. I mean, our farmers, you know, in the last farm bill came forward and wanted a soil health project, which is basically how do we keep more carbon in the soil, healthier soil. Uh, if you get carbon out of the atmosphere, healthier atmosphere. <laughs> it's a win-win. And then if you add carbon markets that have integrity, where farmers can make, have revenue from this, then you have another win. And so, this, this is all very important. So we have um, additional dollars in conservation, and even now with the new money, um, we are amazed at the applications coming in, double what the funding is for this current year. It's amazing how much farmers and foresters and others are coming forward. So conservation here. Um, we have a nutrition title. The, the dollars from nutrition, we don't take money from any place else to go into nutrition. We're not taking money out of nutrition to go anyplace else. You know, it operates over here. We went through a pandemic. We had a 
a record number of people needing help. Now that's coming down. The good news is, as we're seeing, a, a 41 million folks who needed help during the pandemic. CBO says that's going to come down to 35. It's cyclical. It depends on who needs help, what the, what's going on. So that is actually coming down in terms of, of help. But then we have the rest of the important pieces of the Farm Bill, commodity title, crop insurance, research, credit, all of the other things, uh, especially crop title and so on, that basically the budget office has given us flat funding for the next 10 years. That's our challenge. Um, they see uh, prices high, which is true, even though uh, 20, 2022 was the highest in the last 20 years, and it's down, um, and, but it's still higher than it's been. Um, and so they look at things in terms of programs and what will need to be spent based on the prices and so on. They're not factoring in, and the programs don't factor in input costs, as you were saying. And so even though we're seeing the USDA focus on fertilizer, that's coming down, diesel fuel coming down, but there's a lot of other input costs that, that are a, a challenge for us. And so we're in a situation where I believe we need to find ways to uh, make crop insurance uh, more affordable. We have 130 different crops that use crop insurance. I, I think we need to do more there. Uh, the 20 crops in, that benefit from the commodity title, I think we need to do what we can do more there also. Um, that we need to make sure on market access loans and you know research and specialty crops that, that we're finding ways to make improvements. But it is very challenging. And what uh, so I'm looking at everything. The Senator Bozeman and I have lots of discussions about how we do this. We know Farm Bill, as you know, uh, the Farm Bill is, is not normally partisan. It's regions. It's what do you grow, you know? And it's the ultimate, you know, usually struggle between the North and the South, <laughs> you know? Or, or Midwest, Northeast, South, California, who's its, you know, own country. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, we love California, but you know. <laughs> so, but so it's all it's it's putting that together, as you know. It's put, and the, and I will say just one other thing. What worries me the most is, despite I know um, uh, efforts by uh, Chairman Thompson in the House, who I've gotten to know and really working well with, and Ranking Member Scott and so on. I worry when I look at the next two weeks whether there's going to be a government shutdown, self-inflicted. And when they brought the Ag Appropriations Bill out of committee, it was at 2006 farm bill, 2006 levels for funding for agriculture. And the most extreme folks on the floor said they wouldn't vote for it because it wasn't cut enough. So that's the backdrop that we are dealing with here. The, the only way we ultimately are going to be able to get this done is by a bipartisan bill that's on it. And, and, and then working with our House colleagues. But I believe um, that that's what's got to happen, and I'm working hard to do it. Absolutely. And as a follow-up to that, um, could I just dig in a little bit more on what you were saying on the conservation program funding? So I think a lot of folks in this room are curious about the fate of the future of the Inflation right. Reduction Act funding. So do you see that becoming part of the baseline or, or what happens with that? The, it's a little complicated. The, the money right now is running alongside. It's all, it all goes into the most popular conservation programs right now. There were no new programs set up right. under the conservation, as you know, uh, the IRA. It's all through EQIP and, and, and Regional Conservation Partnership Program and, and CSP and so on. And it goes out basically eight years of funding can be spent up to 2031. If we can, or the ideal would be to take those funds and the focus on the climate, climate crisis. So if we can focus it on those programs that deal with carbon sequestration, methane management, those things that, that deal with um, the climate, and the funding, all, if we can take all of it and move it over into the baseline, that would be ideal. And that's something Sir Bozeman and I are both interested in doing. What we will not do, what I will not do, is put the money without the focus on climate over into the, into the baseline. That would be moving us backwards. 
And what I also will not do is take conservation money. The number one threat to our farmers is the weather beating them over the head. It's the climate crisis. Number one threat in a thousand ways. I will not support taking those dollars and putting it in another title. So if we can, the ideal would be to take the entire effort and be able to move it over into the baseline, which is possible to do. So, um, and, and then you'd have bigger baseline for the future. And, um, and it would be focused on those things that farmers are clamoring to have funded right now and, and, and know needs to happen. You know, I, I'd like to be able to have this total discussion on the commodity title, uh, but I know <laughs> you're going you to take gonna care about yeah. <laughs> my cotton and my peanuts. Let me see, growers. cotton, so, peanuts, I'm not yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, getting into the weeds a little bit on the conservation title, uh, all of our our programs in the conservation title have always been so popular. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And everybody yes. from um, uh, around the country uh, takes advantage of our cons conservation program to the point that, uh, as I recall, the last, last time uh, I saw that the uh, oversubscription on conservation is like about three to one yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it is. Um, and we always have this discussion during farm bill debates. Uh, have you, have you given any thought to any way that uh, you can maybe utilize the IRA? You alluded to that. Here. Oh yeah. Is, okay. is that going to help that oversubscription on the conservation? It, absolutely. And in fact, here's the interesting thing: with um, at the moment, because we have extra dollars here, and as you said, in every farmer, I mean, we can we may have different programs used in the Midwest or the Northeast versus the South or whatever, everybody uses conservation. Everybody wants conservation. And it's one of the top, you know, risk management tools right now that I've, if not the top, but it's certainly right up there with crop insurance in terms of risk management. And so um, we have these dollars that we can bring together and to really strengthen this for the long haul. We've had wonderful work together on a bipartisan basis uh, with, in the Senate committee staffs, working together about how to streamline the proposals because we haven't had the fight about the money. We have the money. We have dollars. So now we're talking about how do you cut the application process in, in, in half? How do you streamline it? I mean, there's wonderful things going on. How do we move it out the door faster? How do we help farmers? How do you help beginning farmers? Frankly, one of the things we've heard in all of our uh, hearings leading up to farm bill discussions is that you know, for beginning farmers, it's really hard to kind of wade through all of these different programs and all of the applications and so on. And the smallest farmers, you know, we we need uh, to. So we we are spending a lot of time. And there's great work that's being done, in uh, uh, bipartisan work in our committee staffs on streamlining all of this. So it actually would work better, because that's our biggest concern. Senator Bozeman and I both talked about how one of the best things we could do is make sure we're cutting the paperwork and we're, we're streamlining these programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are other programs too, and in, in especially in the research realm that yes. we're, we've been taking a look at in the task force, yes. including the SARE program, the AGARDA program, things to support critical scientific right. advancements, but also to foster research partnerships with our land-grant universities and with the private sector. And so do you see support for research programs in the 2023 Farm Bill? And how else can we ensure that the Farm Bill is supporting uh, America's leadership in, in research and innovation? Well, I really believe we need a moonshot in agricultural research for the future, both for the United States and the globe. And I worry that, uh, you know, at this point, we don't have those resources to do that. We, Senator Roberts and I um, created the FAR, the Foundation for uh, Food and Agriculture, to mirror what we do in health research, where it's a separate foundation, gets seed money from the federal government, and then has to match it with private sector 50-50, so that we put money in, and then and then we move that forward. So that's important that we keep that going. It's important we keep the other research programs going. But this is another area where I think we need to look outside of just what we 
talk about in terms of the Farm Bill all the time. We passed legislation called CHIPS and Science Act. And in that, there's very robust funding for National Science Foundation, for instance. And um, Senator Cantwell, who chairs that committee, Commerce Committee, is very, very supportive of agriculture research. And she and I have talked about how can we broadly make sure when we're talking about science and research broadly that we are including agricultural research in this. So I'm looking for, again, ways outside of just traditional farm bill where we could really um, expand what we're doing. And I think it's critical. And I think when you look around the globe at what needs to happen in solving our problems, and certainly for climate, the majority of the world's uh, economy is agriculture or forestry. And those management practices, what we are doing to support others uh, and uh, around the world is critical. It's absolutely critical in how we tackle this climate crisis. So, so this is an area where I don't, we aren't where we should be. We won't, in my judgment, have the resources to do what I really want to do. But uh, we're open to all kinds of ideas. I would, I would love to see us really make, I think, you know, agricultural research, food security is national security. It's international security. And when you look at the people coming to the border, trying to get to our country, a lot of, you know, much of that time is because they can't grow food anymore in their country, they're hungry, there's violence going on. Um, and so it's, we've got to tackle this. So we're going into the uh, fourth quarter. Um, and um, you and John have worked so well together. We have. And I, I, have. Can't, I can't fathom any two better leaders to be leading the charge as, uh, as we get to the point of uh, putting pen to paper. But there are always hurdles that uh, have to get over at the last, point, uh, last uh, fourth quarter. So uh, what do you see those hurdles that are out there right now, and um, what are we doing about those? Well, it, it, first of all, let me say that, I mean, technically the guideline or the, you know, deadline September 30th, which we never make the <laughs> deadline on time. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's a, it, the last farm bill went in this show three months, you know, a couple of years before that, it went longer than that. And so, you know, there's always uh, some extra time that's needed. So I'm, I'm aiming towards December, which hopefully we, our farmers need certainty. They need five years certainty, and I'm, I'm aiming for that. It really is a question of uh, resources and being able to put together the bipartisan votes to get the resources and then set the priority for where those should be spent, where the resources should be spent. Um, and I really believe we can come together. I mean, it's always a compromise, you know that. I mean, it's always a compromise on how we're gonna do that. But right now we have ideas that you know, Democrats have that Republicans wouldn't vote for on resources. We have Republicans ideas. That, you know, we'll take the conservation money. We'll take nutrition money. You'll lose all the Democratic votes. That's not viable. And so the question is, how do we find? So I'm. I've talked to my leadership, Senator Schumer, about other ways, are there other opportunities for resources or pay for us? Are there other things that we can do in a bipartisan basis? Um, it it you know, even just to move the ball forward on some things for us. So it really is a, about that. Um, and I think we need to get it right. I need, we need to strengthen risk management tools for agriculture. I think, you know, prices are doing well now, but we know how that goes. It's up and down and up and down. And so we, we've just got to, we have to do the doable, as you know. Our farm bill is the art of the doable. And um, we, we still have folks talking about things that just are going to cost more votes than, than they get. And so it's always a matter of coming together and, and being practical. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that you're um, in, in concert and dis discourse with GT. He's, <clears throat> he's a really good guy yeah. and yeah. Uh, he understands agriculture. And David, of course, is my long time dear friend and is, uh, I know, very engaged. Um, normally, we, we used to think about that uh, the House ought to go first. Mm -hmm. um, this time around, uh, I mean, they couldn't pass a 
agapropes bill. Um, are, have you given thought to the fact that maybe the Senate ought to go first this time around? Oh, I, I, I absolutely think the Senate. If, you know, if we can, you know, we've just got to get a bill put together. And as yeah. soon as we get a bill put together, then we will move it. And, and I think we're going to have to do that, um, again, despite the House Ag Committee's best efforts, people, you know, I, I think it's going to be very difficult. For, oh, and, and maybe they know something I don't. I mean, I hope they do, because watching it from the outside, it makes me very nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Well, folks, we're coming up on the end of time. Uh, we do have time for maybe one question, but before we get to the audience, I do want to ask, so BPC convened a food and nutrition security task force. You already mentioned how food yes. security is so important. So we just wanted to ask how, how Congress, and within the Farm Bill context, can you know, improve some of the diet and nutrition quality aspects of its programs like SNAP. Well, this, this is so important, and actually it's important for all of us, not just folks that um, receive um, SNAP assistance, most of which is temporary, I should mention. Um, but uh, we are very focused, and, and I feel um, really good about things that we've put in in the last two farm bills, particularly 2018. Um, the, what started in Michigan is something called Double Up Bucks uh, with the help of the Kellogg Foundation and wonderful local activists in the Fair Food Network. They came up with the idea of being able to say, if someone's getting SNAP assistance and you go to the farmer's market, we'll give you double the value of your money, two to one, if you're buying fresh fruits and vegetables because we know those are more expensive and we want folks to eat healthy. And so that started what has become a nationwide effort that now our grocery stores are, are asking and, and we are now moving into grocery stores as well. And interestingly, a few months ago, there was a study done that showed that people on SNAP actually eat more fruits and vegetables than people who aren't, which is very interesting. So we better get busy, people, if you're not. <laughs> so, because, but they, that's very important. We've done some other things called prescription, um, uh, produce prescriptions. This actually started with Flint water crisis when we were looking at lead in children and how to help kids. And, the, and what we heard from the doctors is the only thing really is uh, good nutrition for kids. And so um, our great doctor, uh, Mona, who really led the effort in Flint, started giving kids prescriptions, vouchers to go to the farmer's market and say, doctor's telling you, you've got to go and eat, you know, some, buy some fruit and vegetables. And which has now, again, grown into a, a real strategy for health advocates and, and physicians and so on. So there's more that we can do. Um, SNAP education, which really focuses on cooking and, you know, how to, how to do healthier meals and so on, um, is something very important. And we need to continue to certainly focus in that area. Great. All right. We will open it up for one question from our audience. Do we have someone here or online? Oh, Hi. It's a Hi, my name is Cesar Marine. I'm from the office of the governor of Puerto Rico. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, I think my main question is, do you think it, it will be a, uh, a way that the Senate and the House move to with the, the idea of Puerto Rico going inside the program finally into SNAP? Right now, we are the only one of the two territories without SNAP. Right. And I know this has been a conversation in the Senate and the House. so. Well, I would certainly love to see that happen. I've met with your governor. I'm meeting with leaders today about this. The challenge is all um, resources. You, as you know, um, P Puerto Rico gets a block grant. It's not been increased. It's it's not fair. It's different. It, it should be, you, Puerto Rico should be brought in the program. There's certainly interest in doing that. There's not the resources at the at the current time, and we have received strong pushback. Uh, unfortunately. Um, about expanding SNAP in any way from, from Republican colleagues. And so we're, we're going to look to see, we're looking at, is there some way you could start something? Is there some way? Um, but it is, um, it, it's, it will be difficult to be able to do it. We're, we're trying to be creative in some way to even support planning for the, for the future. But it's, it certainly should be done. You should keep advocating for it. And um, it's, 
and it, unfortunately, this is a question of can we get the bipartisan support, you know, resources to begin something. Thank you. Any final words, Saxby, or? Well, <clears throat> first of all, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, but uh, farmers, ranchers, and forest landowners around the country know and understand that uh, Debbie Stabenow is covering their back. Thank you. And um, it's going to be a challenge, as it always does. Um, but I look forward to that, that last night when everything <laughs> comes together. Me too. <laughs> and the, uh, the champagne starts flowing. That's true. You'll be there. We'll invite you. Um, yeah. but, uh, just know that uh, whatever we can be assist assistance relative to um, the debate, uh, whether it's inside the task force or otherwise. Thank you. We, uh, we look forward to continuing to dialogue with you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please join me in thanking Senator Stabenow and Senator Chambliss.